Hello there, well, we are nearly halfway through the lockdown and today we did hear the Prime Minister coming out and addressing the nation or at least giving a video message to the nation. No, there was nothing particularly dramatic this time, no extension of the lockdown or even an economic package which we keep hoping for. Instead, the Prime Minister said Sunday night, 9pm, wave a flashlight, a dia or a candle, switch your lights off and that again one of those ways for the entire country, I assume, to come together. Now, while we continue to wait for economic packages, at noon today, Editor G and others were part of a very special Twitter chat where a large number of experts got together to try and think of ways in which we can fight the coronavirus. And in particular, some of the focus was around what can be done for the economy. So a number of people there, Suman Senha, Vani Kola, Mohandas Pai, Apurva Parohit and others joined in. Shireen Bhan was moderating the whole thing. I think we did hear from a large number of people a sense of a certain amount of concern about the economy. We heard Suman Sena, for example, saying, don't worry about the fiscal deficit. You need to pump a lot of liquidity into the system. Make it 5 to 7% of GDP. Don't worry. Apurva Parohit saying, um, there's going to be a slow, there is a slowdown. Businesses that were trying to keep their heads above water are going to go under. We are trying to prevent layoffs. Don't allow that to happen. It could make the situation much worse. Mohandas Pai saying the government should try and offer maybe 5,000 rupees per month uh, for three months as salary support so there's clearly a certain amount of concern that is coming through Suman Sena again saying businesses will do their best to avoid any layoffs but it's only when the situation becomes difficult that they need to take extreme steps let's hope it doesn't reach that place because then it will be difficult for the economy to recoup now look I think it has to be said that it is time now for the government to really listen to some of these voices that are coming in. We know there's a task force out there. But let's not forget, India has probably taken the most stringent measures anywhere in the world when it comes to fighting the virus. But the stimulus, the efforts that India is taking for the economy itself, not anywhere close to the, to the most uh, generous that we've seen. However, one last thing I just want to refer to from that Twitter chat. We did hear some voices of hope. Vani Kola, for example, coming out and saying that do remember in this crisis, we are seeing big opportunities. The whole world is changing around us. You will see big opportunities. Be prepared to take advantage of that. And I think that is definitely something to keep in mind. There is transformation and every crisis is both a challenge and an opportunity. So don't miss out on the opportunities. Well, let's now take you through all the big headlines of the day. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday addressed the nation on fight against coronavirus. PM Modi praised people for showing discipline during the nationwide lockdown. The Prime Minister has called for a candlelight vigil against coronavirus on Sunday. He asked people to switch off all lights at 9 pm for 9 minutes on Sunday and stand with a dia or a candle or mobile torch light on their doors or balconies to send out a message of light in the dark times of coronavirus. He, however, cautioned against any assembly during the event as was witnessed in some areas during the Thali banging event on March 22nd. PM stressed on the need to observe social distancing. 5 April, ko, Ravivar, ko, Raat 9 baje. घर की सभी लाइटें बंद करके घर के दरवाजे पर या बालकनी में खड़े रहकर 9 मिनट के लिए मोमबत्ती दिया टॉर्च या मोबाइल की फ्लैशलाइट जलाएं Uttar Pradesh government has issued orders that strict action will be taken under National Security Act against those who attack police personnel anywhere in the state during the lockdown. A number of instances on attacks on cops have come to light from several states during the lockdown to fight COVID-19. In UP itself, police and health workers have come under attack from residents of many areas where they went on anti-COVID-19 drives. 
The Supreme Court on Friday dismissed a plea seeking direction for using resorts and hotels for migrant workers walking back to their native places after being rendered jobless following a 21-day lockdown. The plea had argued that shelter homes where migrants are kept allegedly lack adequate sanitation facilities. A bench comprising Justices L. Nageshwar Rao and Deepak Gupta, which heard the matter through video conferencing, observed that the court cannot force the government to listen to all ideas as people may come up with millions of them. Solicitor General Tushar Mehta told the court that state governments have already taken over a building like schools and others to use them as shelters for migrants. The coronavirus cases in India rose to 2,301, Health Ministry announced on Friday morning. The country recorded 336 new cases in the last 24 hours. 56 people have died after being infected by the coronavirus, while 157 have been discharged from hospital after recovery. Mumbai's Dharavi slum has recorded a third coronavirus case in three days. A 35-year-old doctor has tested positive for COVID-19. He has been quarantined and contact tracing has begun to isolate all those who came in contact with him. The doctor's family has also been quarantined and will be tested for infection. The building he was living in had been sealed by health department officials. More than a million people live in Dharavi, which is Asia's largest slum. The World Bank on Thursday approved $1 billion emergency financing for India to tackle the coronavirus outbreak. The World Bank's first set of eight projects, amounting to $1.9 billion, will assist 25 countries and new operations are moving forward in over 40 nations using the fast-track process, the bank said. The largest chunk of the emergency financial assistance, $1 billion, has gone to India. According to a Reuters report, global carbon dioxide emissions could fall by the largest amount since the World War II this year as the coronavirus outbreak brings economies to a virtual standstill. The chair of Global Carbon Project, a network of scientists providing benchmark emissions data, has shared that carbon output could fall by more than 5% year-on-year, the first dip since a 1.4% reduction after the 2008 financial crisis. But experts warn that without structural changes, this emissions decline could be short-lived and have little impact on the amount of carbon dioxide that has accumulated in the atmosphere over decades.